What do you do if you care about human rights and you live near a country whose president has been dubbed Europe's last dictator? At home in Sweden, people around you take freedom of speech for granted. But in Belarus, people who oppose the Soviet-style regime are beaten up and thrown into prison. Belarus is very close to Sweden. The situation in Belarus is completely hopeless. Uh, not that much people talk about the situation in Belarus. People tend to be more interested in speaking about Kim Kardashian than, than the situation in Belarus, so we thought we should do something about it. It's just too close and too bad to leave left alone. Advertising man Pa Cromwell did some very Scandinavian-style brainstorming trying to figure out what to do. You get a bit dizzy, which is, and without the, the side effects or, or the, of alcohol. So I think this is a very good replacement of alcohol, actually, to have a long, hot sauna bath. So you think that's also why you come up with ideas that might be a bit nutty? Uh, that might be, has something to do with it, yeah. Yeah. Cromwell is the co-founder of Studio Total, an advertising agency with a reputation for being provocative and cheeky. This is ASOS, the Austrian International School of Sex. The courses are not just like theory, like sexual theory. It's very, and this is their words, hands-on. At the start of this year, Studio Total was commissioned to draw attention to Austria's declining birth rate. They fooled the media into thinking a sex school was about to open, before revealing it was all a hoax. Our philosophy is that the future belongs to the one who tell the best stories. So we're an ad agency that don't do ads. But Pa Cromwell knows that being provocative in Belarus can have serious consequences. In February, a group of self-styled creative hooligans used stuffed toys to protest laws banning demonstrations in Belarus. The toys were taken away by police, as was the stunt's ringleader, Pavel Vinogradov. Suddenly it was obvious what Sweden's own creative hooligans needed to do. The best way would be to buy an airplane, cross the border illegally, and drop teddy bears over a dictator. After a while, that became kind of obvious that that was like the best thing that we could do. Если верить авторам, 4 июля шведский пилот, вылетевший на небольшом самолете с территории Литвы, подверг город и Венец, это в 70 километрах от Минска, бомбардировки агитматериалами в виде плюшевых мишек с демократическими лозунгами. Многие сразу считают таинственную историю, в центре которой неопознанный летающий объект. Многочисленные очевидцы утверждают, что видели небольшой самолет, с которого на землю летели плюшевые игрушки. Well, it would seem that if you don't have to go down to the woods in Belarus if you were looking for a big surprise, the teddy bears are literally parachuting in from the skies. Now, More about the fallout from the teddy bear drop later. But how did just four Swedes pull off such a daring and dangerous stunt? It took almost two years for the pranksters to prepare. They bought this plane and learnt to fly it. Studio Total co-founder Thomas Mazzetti trained to be the pilot. I had to lose eight kilos. <laughs> His partner and co-pilot, Hanna Lina Frey, also took flying lessons. Well, it was like 10 minutes or so that was a bit, were a bit shaky. You were shaky. I was shaky. <laughs> I was shaky. <laughs> you were shaky. <laughs> Looking after communication and codes was Linda Carlson, who also helped prepare and train an army of teddy bears. It's the first time in uh, history that teddy bears has defeated generals. 
The fourth and final member of the squad was Pa Cromwell, who had a getaway car in case they were forced to land and filmed them from below. Then all of a sudden I heard the noise of a small airplane. And I remember thinking that, oh boy, he's really flying low. And you didn't originally intend to fly the plane yourselves, did you? We've asked some pilots if they were prepared to do it. And, and those well, were the most, the pilots known to be really crazy, like ask him, he'll do anything. Sorry, Anna. And no, they didn't <laughs> want it. <laughs> they called us crazy. <laughs> And they had an air defense, they said, like one of Europe's strongest. That's what they told yeah, you? Yeah, and we laughed. <laughs> <laughs> we said. They tried to minimize the risk by flying very early in the morning on the 4th of July. The day before was Belarusian Independence Day, marked with a huge military parade. The Swedes were hoping that with all the vodka being drunk that night, those charged with protecting the border would have their guard down in the morning. We kind of uh, counted on that. The chain of command would be a little bit uh, out of order, with, with the generals being a little bit hangover. Thomas and Hanna flew low to avoid radar detection. They knew it could be a matter of life and death. Just a few days earlier, they'd learned that in 1995, two American hot air balloonists had been shot down over Belarus by a helicopter gunship. One part of this is that we needed to take a risk. We needed to risk something. We risked money, of course. We used a lot of money on this. We used our time, but also to really show that we meant this was something serious. We couldn't let anyone else take that risk for us. After dropping bears over the village of Ivanets, Thomas and Hanna continued to the outskirts of Minsk and left the rest of their payload, almost 800 bears in total. They were in Belarusian airspace for less than 90 minutes. And as far as the authorities were concerned, they'd never been there at all. Войсковое командование каже, что ніякого самолёту не було, а відео ворожая фальшивка. Дослідуючи представлені фото і відеоматеріали, експерти виявили грубу працю з використанням елементів візуальної фальсифікації, що свідчить про явно провокаційний характер подадзеної інформації. But within a few hours of the flight, the first pictures of the subversive teddies were posted online. Вот, потом гуляли з друзями, мені написали, написала подруга, що є медведики. Сфотографувала, прислала їх. Я публікував ці фотографії у себе на сайті редактором, якого я є. Ну і все. Тобто це було от перше документальне підтвердження іменно білорусів того, що цей факт дійсно був. 20-year-old journalism student Anton Soryapin knew the risk he was taking. Nine days later, the KGB knocked on his door. Ко мені прийшли з обиском домой. Мене посадили в американку в СИЗО КГБ. И месяц, и четыре дня я просидел в тюрьме КГБ. Сурьяпин was charged with being an accessory to the Swedes' illegal border crossing. In other words, blamed for something the government said had never happened. <laughs> in August, journalists in Minsk campaigned for Suryapin's release photographing themselves with one of the bears and posting the photos on the internet. Things then got even sillier. 
Yulia Doroshkevich was arrested when she was photographing Russian journalist Irina Kozlik. They were jailed overnight and fined about $400 each. The charge was picketing by means of photography. Yulia says the authorities were desperately improvising. Yes, I want. А тут произошла какая-то нетипичная ситуация, они растерялись, они просто не были к этому готовы, они не понимали, как на это реагировать, и поэтому начался этот театр абсурда, когда куча взрослых мужчин, которые работают в спецслужбах, искали маленьких плюшевых игрушевых медведей, приходили с обысками фактически к подросткам, задерживали журналистов, которые с игрушками фотографировались, они просто растерялись. Безнаказанного нарушения государственной границы быть не должно. Пресекать всеми возможными средствами и силами, в том числе вооруженным образом. President Alexander Lukashenko finally admitted the teddy bears were real after three weeks of denials. Now, Belarus has fired two of uh, its military top brass over their failure to stop an invasion of Swedish parachuting teddy bears. To explain why the fur is flying in Minsk... Лукашенко звольнил керівників поміжного комітету і супроць повітряної оборони генерал-майоров Ігора Рачковського та Дмитрія Пахмелкіна. Every war has casualties, even one waged against stuffed toys. Also in President Lukashenko's line of fire, the Swedish government. Då kom alltså beskedet att regimen i Minsk kastar ut samtliga svenska diplomater från landet. Belarus has recalled its ambassador to Sweden and is pulling out its entire embassy staff because of teddy bears. What did you think of the way Lukashenko reacted? People are afraid of him, but when he reacts, overreacts and reacts silly, people tend to, to laugh at him and don't take him serious. And when that happens, then a dictator really is in, in, in big trouble. Uh, when people no longer really fear him, that they think that he's ridiculous. Кто помогал вам? Кто заплатил вам? И сколько? Around the world, people responded to the crackdown in Belarus with humor and mockery. Забирайте. Protests were staged outside Belarusian embassies throughout Europe. They are scared of bears. <laughs> you know? That's a scary yeah. bear. I know. What's his I know. name? I know. Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> So what did the man who inspired the Swedish action, Pavel Vinogradov, think of it? Идея с мишками, выпрыгивающими из самолета, безусловно, отличная, безусловно, неожиданная. Мне немного жаль, что я до этого не додумался сам, но с другой стороны, у меня бы на это не было ни средств, ни возможностей. Ну, вообще приятно, что шведы так поддержали нас. Организатор это вторая часть. Виноградов has been jailed six times this year, and last month he was back in court. His latest arrest was thanks to a government crackdown in the run-up to parliamentary elections. Vinogradov belongs to a group of activists called Zmena, and this is how they launched the campaign of their own candidate. But it was just a front. They used the campaign as legal cover for their protests. Four days before the vote, police decided their get-out-of-jail-free card had run out. Today, four of Zmena's activists are on trial, but the atmosphere in court is surprisingly upbeat. This is very serious, but you were smiling a lot in there. 
Ну, я считаю, что как бы... Что значит серьезно? Серьезно это, не знаю, это были репрессии в 1937 году, вот это было серьезно, тогда расстреливали людей. А сейчас мне, в принципе, максимум, что мне может быть, это 25 суток я проведу на, на кресте, на, это уже в седьмой раз, так что мне, в принципе, не, не привыкает. Ну, и еще расстраиваться. В принципе, ничего сильно плохого не происходит. I ask Pavel how he came up with the idea of using stuffed toys in protests. Юмор и смех убивает страх. Это я понял уже довольно давно, и это работает на самом деле. А второе, это я провоцирую власти на неадекватные действия, и я хочу их выставить в нелепом свете. То есть, и получается, если Лукашенко со всей армией, со всей милицией, которые у него есть, он борется с игрушками, то он выглядит нелепо. Вот это, в принципе, чего я добивался. Скажите, что за такое? Он, к сожалению, не понимает. По... Ну вот он понимает. Переведите ему, что запрещена съемка. Anything critical of the government is forbidden in Belarus. Не запрещаю производить съемки. Я не провожу съемки. Поэтому покиньте, пожалуйста, помещение. Я не просто на улице обещали, что до приговора нельзя снимать, а после Вы не снимайте. Не можно снимать. It's why the Swedes sent their teddy bear paratroopers in the first place, as moral support for Belarusians brave enough to speak out. We knew that people that were gonna side with us, they, they would get uh, punished the, for just telling the story as it was. But that is what we were protesting in the, in the first time. They are very brave and they are doing a very brave thing.